The Witcher 2 begins about a month after the events of the first game. Salamandra is gone, the Witcher's secrets are secure, but Geralt still hasn't recovered his memory. The story itself begins with Geralt locked up in some dungeon, apparently for having killed King Foltest of Temeria. The narrative then goes back a little in time to show how this all happened since the last game, starting with Geralt waking up in the King's camp shortly after having had a nightmare about the Wild Hunt. He gets up and goes to attend to his duties as a royal bodyguard, having been appointed as such after having saved the King's life from an unknown Witcher assassin at the end of the last game. Wait, what? Why the hell is Geralt a bodyguard? Immediately here we can see a clear example of a bad narrative decision made in designing The Witcher 2's context. The writers have placed Geralt in an overwhelmingly political situation as Foltest's bodyguard, which completely dismisses all pre-established aspects of Geralt's character from the first game. In the first game, the many choices of political ideology available to Geralt and the player could lead to either political neutrality or active rebellion against the crown. Yet, immediately in the second game, CD Projekt Red forced the player into a political position on the side of the Temerian state that would not suit a neutral or Scoia'tael playthrough of the first game. While this might not annoy some people who are willing to swap or suspend their political ideologies at the drop of a hat, what makes it so much worse is the moral aspect of the whole thing. As an avowed monster slayer who only wants to use their superhuman gifts for good, as full test bodyguard you slaughter men by the dozens purely because they are rebelling against their lord something which you likely did yourself in the first game. How is this in any way keeping with any of the multitude of identities you could commit to as Geralt in the first game? Stranger still is how the context established here is completely contrary to the logic of the first game's plot. The whole objective of the first game was that you were making sure that what made the Witcher so powerful wouldn't get misused by those seeking power and bloodshed, yet here you are doing just that. CD Projekt Red really dropped the ball for the second game's context, and it's something that persists throughout the game. This is most easily seen at the occasions when Geralt gets some of his memories back, and suddenly Ciri and Yennefer become these hugely important and pivotal characters. The only problem is, new and returning players to the series have no idea who the hell they are. This problem could have been easily addressed by making a priority to try and get the player to relate to these pivotal characters the way Geralt does, yet instead we get 5 minutes of cutscenes done in a flash. Why is there not some kind of interactive segment that establishes Geralt's relationship to Ciri or Yennefer? Why are the few cutscenes that we do have so sparse on detail? Why is there no substantial account on them in the journal? The developers essentially decided to bring in two previously unknown characters and make them central to the story, with very little introduction or explanation as to why. If CD Projekt Red's goal was to place as strong a disconnect as possible between any newer returning players and Geralt for The Witcher 2, they did an excellent job. Gameplay-wise, The Witcher 2 is a similar mess when it comes to context. Geralt's amnesia seems to be able to flare up and wipe some of his new memories as well, because he is once again back at zero for all his skills, just as he was at the beginning of the first game. Now, this made sense in the first game because he was recovering from amnesia, but it makes absolutely no sense in the context of The Witcher 2. The only reasonable explanation that I can think of is that CD Projekt Red did not want to create an entire sequel built around a Geralt that you had built up during the course of the first game as this would scare off anyone who wanted to get into the series in the second game. In order to do this, they essentially presented a game that compromised those who played through The Witcher 1 in favour of any newcomers to the series. In conclusion then, The Witcher 2 creates a highly flawed context by completely disregarding vital narrative and gameplay elements already established by The Witcher 1, while at the same time creating an unnecessary disconnect between the player and Geralt that just didn't need to exist. The Witcher 3 thankfully starts a lot better than its predecessor. The third game's story begins with a sequence set in Kaer Morhen where Geralt is spending some personal time with Yennefer. He then heads out, meeting Vesemir on the way, to help Ciri with her Witcher training. It's all fairly idyllic and happy until the Wild Hunt show up and murder everyone. But don't worry, it was only a dream. Geralt wakes up to find that he is in fact on the road with Vesemir trying to track down Yennefer. It's been half a year since the events that ended The Witcher 2, and the Nilfgaardian invasion of the North has conquered Temeria and left devastation in its wake. The Witcher 3's establishment of context addresses and repairs many of the defects of the second game by beginning Geralt's journey on a personal note. Largely unconcerned with the political situation of the invasion, the focus of the story is instead on tracking down and finding Yennefer, and after the introduction, doing the same in pursuit of Ciri. While I did point out that the inclusion, or rather ham-fisted mentioning, of these two characters was a major point of contention in the last game, 
The strong disconnect between the player and Geralt in regards to these two characters has also been well addressed. Significant work has been done on the part of CD Projekt to establish who they are, why Geralt cares about them, and why the player should care too. Yennefer herself is given the focus of the first few hours of the game, and eventually meeting her provides hefty amounts of dialogue and development of her as a character. The player also gets to play a Ciri during certain moments of the story in order to round out the narrative, but also to better understand her as a character as well. You definitely get enough exposure to these two characters in this third game to make up your own mind about them, essentially correcting their flawed inclusion in The Witcher 2. But really, the most remarkable aspect of The Witcher 3, which will be shown in greater detail later, is its near-complete apathy to the events of The Witcher 2. This is particularly telling in how its context completely ignores how the second game's climax dealt primarily with the division of the Kingdoms of the North. Players could choose and influence many different outcomes, from establishing an independent Temeria or creating a new non-human state in Upper Edom, only for it all to be nothing in the third game, because Geralt and the world no longer seem to care, and never seem to discuss it. The fate of characters like Anais, Saskia, or King Hanselt, who are so pivotal in the second game's conclusion, aren't even talked about. None of The Witcher 2 mattered is a central message of The Witcher 3's context. While I've already shown that I'm fairly sympathetic to this kind of context, I feel that CD Projekt could have handled this better. It's clear on reflection that the Geralt of Witcher 1 and Witcher 3 are highly consistent characters with each other, who would never have gotten involved in the political struggles we see in The Witcher 2's climax, but CD Projekt nevertheless made a game in which exactly that happened. Considering that The Witcher 3 is the direct sequel to The Witcher 2, they basically failed to accommodate for all the people who liked and bought into the second game's plot. This is a bit like deja vu considering how The Witcher 2 itself started, but hey, I guess now they know how it feels. <laughs> now, while The Witcher 3 did a lot of good in addressing the flaws of The Witcher 2's context, this unfortunately doesn't extend to the gameplay context, where The Witcher 2's flaws still remain quite prominent. Both games start with Geralt as a blank slate, only knowing the basics of all his skills, which again, only ever made sense in the first game, when Geralt is recovering from amnesia. There is still absolutely no justification or reason why Geralt is suddenly weak as shit in The Witcher 2 or 3, and doesn't know any of the recipes he knew in the previous games. This is a worse problem for The Witcher 3, however, due to its open world design. Whereas in The Witcher 2, you only have to regain your sword fighting, alchemical, movement and magic expertise, as well as the new bomb and trap recipes, The Witcher 3 has all this, minus the traps, plus enhanced versions of all these things. And superior diagrams. And mastercrafted diagrams. Taking the lead from some of the worst open world design trends, there's just way too much stuff, and it just creates a feeling of apathy in the player, rather than curiosity or excitement. It would have made sense for CD Projekt Red to have at least reflected the player's commitment to the earlier games by giving them a head start in these recipes. Why couldn't a 100% Witcher 2 save file have started you with all the basic recipes, for instance? To wrap this all up then, we can see that The Witcher 1 provided the most cohesive context for the player to engage with, while The Witcher 2 did the worst job. The Witcher 3 ultimately sits somewhere in the middle, I'd say leaning more towards The Witcher 1 than does The Witcher 2. And this is great! CD Projekt should really be commended for having identified and addressed so many issues wrong with the second game's context. So while I still maintain that the first game has the best context, I think just as much praise should be given to the third games.